Welcome to the Play Makers Bar Podcast. If you didn't know, we had separated college and NFL. And this episode is all about the NFL. But first, I want to let you know we had a new member to the team. Titus Coach C. Williams is joining us and he's bringing the fire and excitement because guess what? The NFL season has arrived. Thursday night football, Atlanta at Philly will get it kicked off. But don't worry. We'll talk about some of the major games on Sunday and one of the Monday night games. You'll hear our predictions, you'll hear our insights, and you'll get fantasy tips on it. So sit back, enjoy, interact, do whatever you got to do. But enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To another edition of the Playmakers Blog Podcast. Just in case you didn't catch our last episode, we done something different. We split the college and the NFL into two separate shows. So this one is the NFL show. And right now, we are ready to go. I got my co-host, Dallas Glenn. How you doing? Doing good. My fantasy teams look amazing. And we have a new addition to the team. Hell from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Titus, Coach T. Williams. How you doing, sir? All right, all right, all right. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here with you guys. All right, as you know, the NFL season starts off Thursday. It's the yes, Philadelphia Eagles. The Super Bowl champs are at home against the Atlanta Falcons. But before we get into it, Dallas, what you looking for this upcoming season? Well, hell, I'm looking to at least get back to the AFC Championship game. I don't know what the rest of y'all looking for. Tyler, what you looking for? Well, this season, I'm looking for a lot of explosiveness between all these divisions, all 32 teams. Great offseason. A lot of moves being made. A lot of moves still being made right now. We can expect moves being made up to the last deadline dates. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Just because the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl champs doesn't mean that we necessarily going to go back there. We got to work hard to get back to that spot. So we all at the bottom of this barrel. And we got to work hard. So we got to get out there and prove it. And a lot of moves happening in the offseason. That's like Titus said. Um, the Rams made moves. Chicago made moves. You know, Jacksonville, Tennessee. That whole AOC South has is going to be a division to look out the. The Giants got better. The Cowboys got better. So it's a lot to look forward to. So with that being said, we're going to get you get you guys set for the week, and we're going to kick it off like the NFL kicks it off Thursday night. The Falcons, Eagles, meeting Lincoln Financial So, um, you know, I'm going to give you this one first because you're an Eagles fan and you stay in Atlanta. What's your thoughts on this opening night game? Hey, man, absolutely, man. Coach T here in the building, and we're, we're going to talk a little uh, Atlanta Falcons, Philadelphia Eagles football real quick. The first game of the season, the highlight of the whole thing. We're going to kick it off right. We're going to show you what it's meant for, okay? We're going to start off with uh, Falcons, you know, good old Matty Ice, you know. Uh, what, what, what What is he going to do? He got a lot to prove this year. Uh, he signed a little extra extension on his little contract. Uh, we're looking to have Devontae Freeman in action. Didn't see him in preseason. Didn't see Julio in preseason. Uh, but we did see somebody in preseason that uh, sparked a little interest out there. Calvin Ridley. Uh, he's, he's he's definitely worthy to be mentioned and an eye to be looked at. So we want to see what Calvin Ridley is going to do this year. Uh, when it comes down to the Philadelphia Eagles, of course, you know, Super Bowl champions. Whoop, whoop. We got to go out here and do it. But – Right now, we are suffering with some injuries. Uh, we will be missing Carson Wentz, our quarterback. Uh, he's not necessarily ready. We don't want to force this issue. Uh, we're going to give credit to where credit is due to Nick Foles and what he has done and what he did for us as the Philadelphia Eagles. And, of course, he's been with us. He's been in the system. That's why we was able to do so and win that game. But uh, Car- uh, Nick Foles will start the season off. Um, we trust in him. 
in return coming off an of injury, we're looking forward to see Darren Sproles coming back. Uh, with Darren Sproles uh, being back in that backfield, he's definitely an option for a receiver out the backfield because we also will be missing Jeffries. Okay, uh, so you know Philly, we got a lot. To, we got a lot to work for, but we ain't about to get ready to just give up like that. Philadelphia Eagles all day. You picking the Eagles? Absolutely. All right, Titus is going Philly. That is what you have to say. Mm, I don't know. Everybody being zero zero, I pick Matt Ryan over Nick Foles in the quarterback duel. Mm-hmm. Philly's returning most of their defense, and there ain't many injuries on their defense. But it's just, I don't know, man. Nick Foles ain't no fluke. Nick Foles is a good quarterback. I don't think people give him enough credit, but credit where it's due. I'm picking Matt Ryan if the season's fresh. You got Atlanta. One for each. Side. Okay. Looking at it, as tight as you said, no Ashawn Jeffries for week one. Nick Foles will get the start. Darren Sproles is coming back. Atlanta's coming in. They know the Super Bowl is in their backyard. They want to do better than what they did last year, even though they still made the playoffs. Yeah, as you mentioned, Calvin Ridley out of Alabama. He's something to watch out for, along with Julio Jones, Mohamed Sanu. You still got Dante Freeman, Tevin Cummins come out of the backfield. Matt Ryan still the helm as the quarterback. But the game is in Philly. Absolutely. You already know. The hardest place to play. One of the hardest places to play in the NFL. I'm going to go with the Eagles. I'm going to say Philly sneaks out this one because they might have a little Super Bowl hangover after they see that banner drop. And, you know, they might they might be not in tune into the game at the beginning, but they'll get themselves together. And I say I can say Philly coming out with a three-point victory. That's open up the season. Okay. Now, with that being said, All we're right. on to some Sunday football action. Going up. And in the NFC East, going up to New York, the Jacksonville Jaguars coming off a of LC championship loss to the New England Pacers, open their season up in the Meadowlands against Eli mm-hmm. Carm Barkley and the New York Giants. Dallas, you're the Jazz fan of the show. I'm going to give you this one first. Our defense is fully intact and coming back. Preseasons don't really matter, but it is significant that with thirds, seconds, what have you, we still had a top five passing defense and the top defense overall after the preseason. Jalen Ramsey didn't play half those games. Boye sat out some games. Starter sat out games, like, basically in rotation. Still led the league in defense in the preseason. Now we're coming out full force. We know what we got to do. The core is back. Contracts are signed at least for the next two years. OBJ and Jalen have basically been talking and excited for that matchup all season. So we know that matchup is going to be good. That's going to cancel itself out. I think OBJ gets his. OBJ might get like however many receptions for 50 yards. Shoot, because it's OBJ and he got a new deal, he might even score. That being said, that's only seven. I think AJ locks down Shepard. And I think that Marcel Darius and the D-line do what they got to do to get to Eli and put some pressure on him and do what they got to do to corral Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley might get 90, you might even get 100. But I think the defense does enough to keep the offense in the game. I ain't saying the Jaguars win by a lot. So I'm saying they win by very little. Might be seven, might be five, might be a field goal. But I'm picking the Jaguars simply because while the Giants have weapons, they can get to Eli. And they'll probably pick them off at least once. A good observation. Games in New York. Eli, he has a running back now. You still got Odell Beckham, who is richly paid. You still got Stone and Shovel. You got Everett Ingram at the tight end position. So, you know, that offense against that defense is going to be a good matchup to see. My question is, what kind of Giants defense are we going to see against Leonard Fournette and Blake Borders now? That's where my concern comes in at. Even though the Giants had a good defense last year, would it still be that good to open up the season? And with that being said, I think I'm going to agree with Dallas. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go with the Jazz on this one to get it done on the road and win a win a close fault game. And so, Titus, floor is yours. 
All right. Well, here we go. This right game right here, Giants, Jags. Woo. Well, this one's been building up for the last couple of weeks. Uh, right here, we're going to talk about this. Jalen Ramsey, Odell Beckham, the biggest mouth on both sides of the team. Okay. Uh, these guys right here, it's going to be a showdown. It's going to be a – I expect a lot, a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, a lot of junk talking, maybe a few flags being thrown. But uh, I, it's going to be a definitely knockout punch. Uh, I think Jalen Ramsey will take the best victor of uh, Odell. But shy to the fact Odell will get a few yards in there, maybe 50, 60 yards, a couple. I mean, he might get a touchdown, but, you know, some short yards. But that's about it good for fantasy points. Uh, but when you're talking about defense – in the Giants defense, well, even though I am an Eagles fan, I got to give it up to the Giants defense because there's a superstar over there that's shining his light since his rookie debut. That's right, B.J. Goodson. You got to give it up to that guy. The middle linebacker, he's holding it down. He's running. He's all over the place, okay? What you going to do when B.J. is coming for you, all right? So, Fortnette got a lot to co- come, through, come up uh, with this game. Uh, he has not played as much as necessarily wanted, you know. But uh, I think coming out the gate, he will be strong. He will be ready. Um, when it comes down to the passing game, like I said, with Sterling Shepard, Odell on both sides, uh, forcing into Odell, uh, it's going to open it up some room for Saquon to get in there and get some run. I think the guy's an explosive rookie. You see, off that first play, they keep replaying it over and over again on NFL Network right now. But uh, Saquon Barkley is definitely an exciting guy coming out of Penn State, and we're looking forward and and and, and glad to see him out here doing being successful. Uh, we're gonna see what Blake Bortles got in his tank. Is he gonna be able to withstand the pressure, or is, is he gonna be able to deliver that ball? Like I said, he got a uh, Devontae, uh, uh, I mean Dante Moncrief. Uh, so he, you know he got rid of a few receivers in the off season. Uh, I wish right now the best possible option for. Tez Bryant will be Jacksonville, but we don't know. You know, we'll have to see how it goes. Des Bryant, Texas, ain't he going to uh, participate later on the season? Nah, that's okay. I don't think nobody's going to want you later on the season, but it's either now or never. So, Des Bryant, you need to get your butt over there to Jacksonville and sign you a deal. I'm going to go Giants on this one. All right. Yeah. There you have it. Now we're going to get into – a, a interest, another interesting matchup. Foxborough, Massachusetts, home of the New England Patriots. Where they'll welcome in Houston as they return to Sean Watson and J.J. Watt back to the team. Now, last year, these two teams met in Foxborough, and it was a great game. Deshaun Watson and his rookie season pushed Tom Brady to the brink. But Tom Brady is Tom Brady. So when the lights were big and the moment was big enough, Tom Brady pulled it out. As I look at this game, Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, it's easy for people to pick New England because it's, it's New England. It's, it's the Patriot way. They always get it done no matter what or who is in the lineup. I'm going Houston. I believe that New England – Gonna start this season like they did last year. 0 1 1. Titus, how, how do you feel? Well, this game right here, you know, I can really care less about some New England, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Patriots. Okay. We already showed them that they are not the best. Philadelphia Eagles is the best. So if you want to beat the best, and be the best, you got to beat them, baby. So, uh, you know, we ain't going to dip too much in the, uh, uh, New England and what they got going on. Tom Brady, uh, the guys, he's super awesome and all that good stuff. Yeah, let's get out of here. Gronk, uh, you know, I love the guy. You know what I'm saying? He's a great guy. You know, he does a lot for the community. Uh, and he got a little extra little sweet deal. He's he been out there uh, practicing. So, you know, he's going to be ready. Uh, you got to stop Gronk. That's total mismatch on almost anybody. Um, with Edelman being gone out of the little four game suspension, you got Chris Hogan still going to come up through the slot playing that role. So, uh, I expect New England to do what New England been doing for the last decade. Okay. Um, however, Houston, hot team, hot team right now. Great hot season last year and then crunch. 
lose your star quarterback, star rookie quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Man, what an explosive season the guy had last year. Uh, a lot of expectations you got to come off from this year. I think the weight is going to be on his shoulders. Uh, you do have Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins to throw to. But still, um, through it all, it's going to be a home game in Houston. Uh, New England will have to uh, travel. Um, I'm going to go New England game one. Dallas? Yeah, I'm going New England, too. I think it's – I think people are just so eager to not have to see New England anymore that they're not giving them the credit. New England's never had receivers. They've only had receivers for, like, two years. That was 2007, 2008. When you really look at this run, Tom Brady has been making it work with anybody. A lot of people want to be high on Houston and everything, but look at RG3's rookie season. Look at Andrew Luck's rookie season. Look at look at a lot of these dual threat quarterbacks and these young quarterbacks' rookie years to look at the slumps they have. When people get film on these exciting dual threat quarterbacks, if they can't prove that they can sit in the pocket like Russell Wilson and throw it for 35, at least 35 attempts a game, the film doesn't lie, man. He gets hurt, tears his ACL last year. That basically forces him to become a pocket passer. RG3 tore his ACL. We saw what happened when he was forced to become a pocket passer. I'm just not high. Jadavion Clowney has turned into a pro bowler, but he's still not what he is supposed to be as a number one overall pick. J.J. Watt, he was up before. Now he's coming off of an injury, a back injury that took him out for the whole year. He's a 3-4-5 technique defensive end. You're not going to be able to rely on him at this point for 20-something plus sack seasons. You'll be lucky if you get like 11 or 12. I mean, between Deshaun Watson having film and having to be forced to be a pocket passer so early in his career, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is going to get doubled every week. Now you're basically making the teams call your bluff. It's I, I'm not as high on Houston as other people. And New England still has Tom Brady and Bill Belichick on the sideline. And everybody knows when Bill Belichick gets film on somebody, it's a wrap. The worst mistake that probably could have happened was them playing Deshaun Watson early and letting him get hurt because now people got film. Mm. And if it wasn't for that film, the Philadelphia Eagles would have two Super Bowls right now. Just want to put that out there. Yeah, only only Coach T can do it. But moving on, San Francisco 49ers. Have to open a season without their running back, Jerry McKinnon, who's done for the season, which happened last week. That's unfortunate. There was a lot of expectation for the 49ers offense with McKinnon and Garoppolo. But nevertheless, next man up will be Alfred Morris as they go on the road and they play the Minnesota Vikings. Titus, I'm going to give you this one first, San Fran at Minnesota. Well, San Fran, Minnesota, I don't have much to say about this game right here. Who's going to let this game play out? Uh, it's too much uh, inconsistencies and a lot of trade moves being made on both teams. Uh, I do like Jimmy G. Uh, I do like uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, but they, they haven't proven enough that they're stand in their quarterbacks, you know. Uh, so, you know, we just got to let this one play out. If I had to pick a victor, I'm going to go with the home team, Minnesota. Dallas, what you have? I'm thinking the same thing. I'm thinking that if Minnesota has Dalvin Cook back, if Dalvin Cook is 100% and the Vikings defense can be the Vikings defense, run, play defense, smash mouth football, Kirk Cousins, if he can be like his successor in Washington, if he can be like Alex Smith and just not lose the game, I think he might have that edge that Case Keenum didn't have. Mm. Oh, you picking Minnesota? Yeah, I'm picking Minnesota. I, I'm I'm thinking that Jimmy Garoppolo is gonna get his, but Minnesota, I think they're good for the long game. Young running back. Yeah, he had a very serious injury, but you can find running backs in the draft. Not this year, maybe in free agency. You don't know on the waving wire. Find him a running back that can back him up, so you don't have to give him as many touches. Kirk Cousins, hopefully pays off somehow. A lot of role players on that Viking defense that ended up being number one overall last year. I'm thinking that the Vikings are playing a long game, and I think that they have just enough to make a run this season, make it back to the playoffs and all that good stuff. So I'm picking the Vikings in week one. 
I guess it's Vikings all across the board. So I'm picking Minnesota. Or I think Richard Sherman going to San Fran, and your first sense would be to defend Stefan Diggs or Adam Thielen. I don't think that's a good way for you to start off your your, your new stay in a new town. You, you already lost your running back. They got their running back. And right now, I'm I'm leaning on that defense of Minnesota to do enough to shut down Garoppolo enough for, for the offense to do what they need to do to get the more points on the board to get them the victory at home. So that's how we in that. And then we're going to go to the LC West, which is going to be an interesting one. Kansas City with new quarterback Patrick Mahomes taking the hell. On the road with a divisional matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. So me and, T- me and Titus, he picked KC to win the division. I got LA to win the division. So before we well, the both of us get into it. I'm going to let Dallas go first on this one. Chiefs. I mean, Chiefs. I don't see how Antonio Gates coming back. I mean, it's good for your fantasy because Phillip Rivers is going to be forcing him to ball the whole time. I mean, they got Keenan Allen. It's just the Chargers always find a way. Even with John Gruden single-handedly sabotaging the Oakland Raiders and basically destroying any chances that they had this year. 10-year contract. I guess he figured he had time to rebuild or whatever. So the division is basically between these two teams. I'm thinking Kansas City. Andy Reid has proven to at least win you a division. You got a young rookie quarterback who's a dual threat. You got Tyreek Hill. You've got that defense coming back. Really, it's about consistency. You've got a rookie quarterback coming into a situation where he has to coach, he has the weapons, he has the defense. Andy Reid just has to figure out a way to get him to realize you don't have to do too much. Look at the guy you're facing off against at week one. You don't have to do that much. You just have to make your reads and do what you do. Look at your predecessor. Look at the guy you're facing this week. A lot of people pick Los Angeles to win the division because they're the safe pick. But San Diego, I mean, Los Angeles has always been the safe pick. And they've basically been the same team for the past 12 years. And they barely ever get to the playoff at Kansas City. Mm. I know you, 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 you high on Philip Rivers when it comes to fantasy. Mm. But you think Kansas City to pick the win the division. So I want to know what you saying at. Well, you know, this one here is a tricky game right here. Uh, it, it, it all depends on that that high momentum coming out. Uh, right now. You got Casey on one side, high momentum. We will give it up for for my home is Patrick Mahomes. Uh, he's definitely, you know, what I'm saying looking good through pre- preseason. Uh, that nice throw he threw out here in Atlanta. Uh, had my man Tyreek Hill in the corner. Um, Tyreek Hill, Kareem Hunt, you know, them guys they're still explosive. Uh, Andy Reid, my, my boy, got to give him up. Uh, big old red Santa Claus over there. Uh, I like Casey, but you cannot and forget. Phillip Rivers, man. Phillip Rivers is a guy in fantasy football that will get you some money, get you some points when you don't expect it, you know. Um, with Melvin Gordon running hard, I, I, I think these guys will put up some points against KC. Um, it will be a, a, a shootout game, probably somewhere in, in the good 30s. But uh, I'm going to go KC. I'm going to charge. I picked them to win the division. You coming out with a divisional opponent already? You have to make a statement. You have to. There's, there's no other way to look at it. You have to make a statement. And as I said, the Chargers was one of those safe picks that people do. I picked the Chargers because they had no changes in major spots. Everybody's back for them. So I got to go with Chargers. I got to go with Phillip Rivers. I just, yeah. I just expect yeah. them to go ahead, make that opening statement out the gates. Hey, we are here. We, we, we're going to take this division. That's a good way to doing it by beating the team who won a division last year. That's a good start to it. So that's that's the way I see it. it they got to win that game to be considered in winning the division. Week one is going to be a great game. KC San Diego. Oh, now let's get sorry, not San Diego. LA. You good. Let's get to a team that Titus really don't like. I don't think, to be honest, I don't think the three of us really don't like that much. The Dallas Cowboys going on the road to take on the Carolina Panthers. 
Now, Ezekiel, mm-hmm. back. there's no suspension hanging around. So, Dallas is loaded. They got a fully roster. Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers are coming off a playoff with parents, but they lost to New Orleans. Christian McCaffrey is the main running back now. According to reports, they will be out Curtis Samuel. They say he'll be most like he'll miss this game. Titus, I'm going to give you this one first. Well, we're going to get these guys out the way because we ain't going to spend much time on them, but we got to talk about them as it is. Jerry World, Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott. Uh, Right now, actually, one of the best quarterbacks coming out of this rookie year, Dak Prescott has a lot of weight on his shoulders, okay? Uh, Not his rookie year, but this going on his third year, he still has that weight on his shoulder that he needs to prove. Uh, He has not necessarily – he's done what he needed to do, but it's not been what I guess the whole Dallas community wants him to do. They want want so much more. You know, everything's big in Texas. Uh, You got Zeke Elliott back this year. Uh, got him on time this year. You know, last year, like I said, once again, the reason why Dallas did not make the pro season at all is because Zeke should have just took the suspension early instead of trying to fight through it. Uh, I am interested in seeing what uh, M- Michael Gallup is doing for the receiver core. Uh, he, he did look pretty good in the preseason. Um, got some speed on that guy. So, you know, definitely got to watch him. And you got Cole Beasley, too. Uh, definitely a great slot receiver. So, if Dallas do what they need to do, Dallas will win a few games. Now, when we're talking about the Carolina Panthers, to keep on pounding, Cam Newton going to keep on pounding that ball. You saw what the guy just did in preseason. The man tried to break his own neck. He like, hey, I'm ready to go, okay? So uh, I, I see Cam in there smiling, ready to get down to business. This is about a series. I don't see Cam all his whole career. So – I'm looking for Cam to go in there and do what they need to do. Uh, McCaffrey, second year in, he, uh, I'm, I'm, I need, I need more out of the guy. You know, he's like a little engine that could. You know, he can run good, but you know, he's just got, he got to hit them holes and 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 get. He got the speed on him, but he just got to hit them holes up and through that middle. Uh, so we're looking for him. You know, to, to keep on doing what he's doing. Uh, Carolina receiving core, they got what? Devin Funches, Torrey Smith, uh, some veterans. Uh, they they should know. Devin Fletcher should know the system. Torrey Smith um, coming coming in. Um, so we're gonna see if Cam get that get that ball out there, them boys. We're gonna see what they're gonna do. Uh, if they going on the road or Carolina being at home, Dallas on the road. I'm gonna go home team Carolina. Dallas, what you got? <clears throat> I'm thinking it's tricky because I'm thinking that it's gonna be like a low scoring affair. Luke Keekley. I'm thinking he might be a better overall player than Ezekiel Elliott. I'm trying to think of how the run games match up. Because when you look at the Carolina run game, you have to consider that Cam Newton is actually the focal point of their running game. Christian McCaffrey is an all-purpose player. Christian McCaffrey really should be their punt returner or maybe their slot receiver. Starting Christian McCaffrey at running back, that might be a mistake in the long term. But Cam Newton is an MVP quarterback. He can actually pass the ball. I think people forget that he has Greg Olson coming back healthy. He has Funches. He has Smith. He has weapons. I mean, it seems like we've seen him do so much more with so much less. Now he's coming against a Cowboys team who still hasn't found a way to put together a damn defense. I think with the Cowboys defense lacking against a former MVP and them having to rely so much on the run game because Dak Prescott had his chance to prove that he was a true franchise quarterback last year. I'm I'm picking Carolina. I think the Cowboys – and another thing that people have to remember about the Cowboys, their offensive line is actually getting old and nicked up. People don't usually like to talk about their offensive line because it's not a sexy position. But, you know, their center is dealing with a very rare illness. Tyron Smith has been getting nicked up for the past couple years. I mean, you know, it was a great investment, and you saw what can happen when you invest in the offensive line primarily. But um, it's, it's starting to get old. I don't know if the pass rush gets to Dak Prescott, but I don't know if the run game is as strong either. I got Carolina. Carolina across the board. With McCaffrey being the lead back, I think, Titus, you will see more of what Chris McCaffrey is capable of doing. I think they had had Jonathan Stewart, so 
Johnson Stewart was the lead back, so they didn't really use Chris McCaffrey enough in the backfield as a runner, more so than they did as a as a pass catcher. But with him being mm-hmm, the lead mm-hmm. back now, he's going to get more rushing attempts now. So you going you gonna to see if he can hit that hole and break loose. You gonna see okay. when they do this, these stretch plays and they get him outside on the edge, what what he can do. So Dallas, they got Randy Gregory back on suspension. Finally, they still got Demarcus Lawrence. So that 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 D line, that D line, something to not sniff at. But what about their corners? Do they have? Is they secondary solid enough to help keep the defense off the field? Or do they have to rely on a on a front seven too much? So a lot to let go of Orlando Scandrick with that backfield they got. So you know mm. that's my concern with Dallas. Yeah, they got Zeke back, and everybody know we're gonna they gonna get a ball to Zeke, and every now and then that Prescott hit. He's your quick weed. There you go. Get the ball out your hand. Three seconds. Get it out of there. But going yeah. into Carolina, dealing with Cam Newton, McCaffrey. Greg Olson, Funches, Toy Smith. I think it'd be too much for Dallas. So I gotta go I gotta go Carolina. I'm sorry. I gotta go Carolina. Dallas fans might be up in war because all three of us pick Carolina, but it we don't see how Dallas goes into Carolina and wins that game. Let's bring up to our first Sunday night game. One of the oldest rivalries in the NFL. I think this might be the oldest, ain't it? I think it is the oldest. NFC North battle, Mr. Tupinski, newly signed Khalil Matt and the Chicago Bears going to Lambeau Field to face a returning Aaron Rodgers with the new target in Jimmy Graham. This is going to be an interesting matchup. That is I give you this one. Aaron Rodgers is 100% healthy and on the field. <laughs> Packers. I mean, to be honest, that's all I need. I mean, yeah, Khalil Mack. Even the greatest pass rusher of all time only had 23 and a half sacks in a season. That means that if there's 30 snaps a game, he'll truly affect one or two. Aaron Rodgers is going to throw for at least 45 attempts. He's got a new target. It's the same system. He's the greatest player pound for pound on the field. Tom Brady is the best quarterback. But when you're talking the best NFL player, bar none, is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers doesn't mm-hmm. have to do anything else, and he's a Hall of Famer. I don't trust Mitch Trubisky to go against Aaron Rodgers. I don't, I mean, Khalil Mack, Khalil Mack, he just got there. Even if he wore the master of the system and just used raw pass rushing ability, again, you're looking at one, two, if it's a great game, three snaps. Three snaps out of maybe 60 that he will truly be able to affect and disrupt. Aaron Rodgers is going to at least throw 40 times. They might rush just to keep the defense honest. I'm picking the Packers. Titus. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Come on now. We got to look at this game. We got to see what it is. It's Sunday night football, okay? Highlight on Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers is back, baby, and he's about to unload a whole can of whoop ass on Chicago Bears. It's a divisional game, baby. What you think is going to happen? Chicago's going to come to Green Bay and win? Ha! <laughs> Try again, all right? Aaron Rodgers, Jamal Williams leading the backfield. You got Ty Montgomery. He's still kind of suffering injury. That's what's going on with the uh, Williams incident. Uh, Devontae Adams, Random Cobb, Jimmy Graham. Need I say more, okay? Green Bay all the way. Now, don't forget about M- Mitch Trubisky, okay? Uh, nice young rookie, rookie I mean, not rookie, but, you know, second year coming in there. So he's still still, still wet behind the ears. Um, you got a, Allen Robinson coming out there. You got Tyler Gabriel, okay? But let's not forget about a port move they just made. Khalil Mack just signed with Chicago Bears. So we are looking to see what the defense of Chicago to step back up and be that great defense again. But on this game that night, Best man goes Green Bay. Green Bay. I mean, yeah, Khalil Mack is now the highest paid defensive player in the league. One day after Aaron Donald became the highest defensive player played in the league, but it's Green Bay. 
A Rod's back. It's in Lambeau Field. One of the toughest places to win that period. At night too. And Rogers there's enough said on that one. I mean, ain't nothing more I can say on that one. Now that brings us to Monday night. There's two Monday night games. The Jets are at Detroit. Sam Donald starting. But we're gonna focus on the second one, the more the more intriguing one, which is the LA Rams. Welcome, John Gruden. As they travel to Oakland to face the Oakland Raiders. I'll take this one first. Mm-hmm. On, on the show. I just said a few minutes ago, we signed Aaron Dog, who was the highest paid defensive player before Khalil Mack signed his deal. That means Aaron Donald's in the poll and Duncan Sue's in the poll. Mm-hmm. There, you already know the D-line you have to worry about if you're the poison quarterback. And then if you do get past that, you have to worry about a key to Lee on one side, Marcus Pierce on the other side. Sam Shields at one corner. Nakel will be at the other corner. Mm-hmm. Like, so, mm-hmm. pass that is like, where are we going to pass the ball at? So, you're going to have to run. But remember, we got it down to Kisu, along with Aaron Donald, not to mention Marcus Parkers. So, on the defensive side, Derek Carr might be in some trouble. He might get drilled uh, about a few times. So that means what is Marshawn Lynch going to do to help Derek Carr out? And then when you flip it over, Oakland, like we just talked about, trade Khalil Matt Chicago. So your best defensive player is not there, and you're going against the number one offense from a year ago who added Brandon Cooks to the to the field to, to replace Sammy Watkins. You still got Ty Gray, the offensive player of the year. You still got Jared Goff. You still got Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. So how is this defense going to stop the number one offense from last year? So you know I'm going to L.A. Rams. Mm. Titus, what you got to say? Well, I like to call this one Battle of the Wild Wild West right here, you know. Um, <laughs> you got L.A. Rams. You got Oakland Raiders. Hey, man, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited. This is another one we're going to sit back and watch. But I'm really am excited to see John Gruden get a chance to come back on the field and do what he does, loves best, and that's coaching. Uh, coaching coaching is a great opportunity for anybody who's able to share the passion and teaching and learning and brotherhood between this game love game we have called football. Um, David Carr, I love the guy. He, he's doing pretty good. Uh, I want to see him – have a good season this year, a healthy season this year. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, I want to see him be a, have a, at least a, a good consistent season before he's out of here. Um, so, you know, we, we're going to go with the, on the Oakland side, but we could talk about L.A. You know, you got Jared Goff. You got Ty Gurley. I mean, you know, Goff, great quarterback. He's, 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 breed, he's evolving himself, okay, you know. If somebody, if a quarterback had the ever chance to evolve, that would be a pure example of Jared Goff. You know, he's evolving right now. So I'm interested, more interested in seeing what he's going to do in the hot seat. And Ty Gurley, I want Ty Gurley to, to do what he got to do. Stay healthy is the key. Right now on this hot game, um, it's a toss-up. But I believe in politics. And I'm going to go John Groot is going to get his first win back in the NFL. Oakland Raiders, baby. Now Dallas. That's to remind the people, you picked the Raiders to win the AOC West. That was before they traded Khalil Mack. And that was before they released Martavius Bryant. Oh, yeah, he's out of there, buddy. Do you still stand with Oakland to win the division? Nope. You don't? Uh-uh. Right. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like Oakland, Derek Carr is a very good vertical passer he might be the best leader of a vertical passing game in the league behind Matthew Stafford. It's just, if I'm the franchise quarterback, I know Derek Carr's personality. He, he's very quiet. He's conservative. He's laid back. He likes to lead with action. He's not going to be the guy to disrupt your locker room. I know he got voted a captain. He's going to have to see on his jersey. Dude, I would be pissed if I was him. You get rid of one of my weapons. You knew what was happening with his drug situation coming in. 
why sign him and let me work with him? Let me get used to him. Let me think of the prospect of him and Cooper on two sides and Marshawn Lynch to keep them honest in the box. Then you cut him because of his drug suspension that you knew was coming. Then you trade the best defensive player in the league away. You 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 traded him for picks that I can't use this year. You you the the the, set, the Los Angeles Chargers were basically picked to win because of Philip Rivers. They just signed Antonio Gates, so basically the Los Angeles Chargers getting picked to win the division is purely based off of Philip Rivers. Khalil Mack mm. could have negated that. I don't under. John Gruden getting a 10-year, $100 million contract. He knows he's about to go to Las Vegas. John Gruden being John Gruden, sitting in the booth for 10 years, I'm worried because it was basically public knowledge that he wasn't going to come back to coaching unless it was for a crazy-ass amount of money like the amount that he got. When you give a coach a 10-year contract with that kind of money, knowing that if you fire a coach in the NFL, it's all guaranteed, you're automatically giving a coach the okay to, oh, okay, well, I can build my team. You're not saying I want to win now when you give a coach a 10-year, $100 million contract. A win-now contract is three years, maybe 50 mil. A 10-year contract is not a win-now contract. John Gruden is acting as such. So it's like, I mean, if we had did that episode maybe two weeks later, I probably wouldn't even have picked Oakland. Hell, I don't even know who I want to pick. <laughs> but Dog, like, nah, they're not winning that game. They're, they're not. They're not going against Los Angeles, who has a quarterback that clearly Jeff Fisher was the problem his rookie year. His coach then reached out to him. He's played in the playoff game. He's gotten that dust off. He knows what it's like now. His running back is signed up. His deep threat is signed up. His D tackles are signed up. He has a defense to help him out whenever he does a young boy turnover. <sighs> Derek Carr's ability to cause a vertical passing attack is the only reason why the Raiders will have a chance, but they still ain't going to win. I picked the Rams. There you have it. That was all our picks. But before we get out of here, Titus got some fantasy tips for you guys. Titus, go ahead take it away. Absolutely, man. Fantasy football is here, and boy, I'm glad it's back. Top fantasy picks right now. We're going to talk about quarterbacks. Number one coming out the gate, Deshaun Watson. You got to get him first. You better be the first. You better go ahead and risk it. If you don't risk him and if you can, he's available, go to Aaron Rodgers. That's right. Aaron Rodgers is your next best pick on your fantasy call list. And then third, you can't go wrong with Big Ben, Okay. We're going to stay in the wide receiver court, and we're going to slide over to Juju Smith-Schuster. Pick up some Juju, okay? He got some good Juju for you. So you want some points? Go Juju Smith. Second, of course, pick up Julio Jones. He's going to do some great numbers out there this year, hopefully. And third, go ahead and pick up the Pineapple Express, Odell Beckham, okay? He, if he's available, top three wide receivers, going to pick him up. Running backs. Absolutely, you already know. Say Quan Barker. Pick him up first if he's available. If he's not, go with your next best bet, Leonard Fournette. Okay. Big run, strong back coming out of Jacksonville. He's definitely going to put up some numbers. And then, of course, third, Devontae Freeman. Atlanta Falcons got a lot to prove this year. They're going to rely on Devontae to be doing what he needs to do. Pick that Eagles defense if you can. Going to snatch them up off that off that list of the uh, draft list if you already have drafted. Uh, sliding on down to kickers, number one kicker got to go with Mason Crosby. Okay, Mason Crosby, Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers going to be having that man all up and down that field. Definitely Mason Crosby. Uh, if you want to pick up a sleeper kicker, you want to go with Santa Sebastian Janikowski. Yeah, he's back. Uh, and he's up in Seattle right now. Seattle, uh, they definitely are going to be in contendership. Uh, we won't see how many games they actually do win. But I say between Russell Wilson legs and Sebastian Janikowski leg, going to get that guy. He's going to have some points for you. And uh, that's my fantasy pickup. If you want to hear more about it, come check it out next week. As we uh, we are drafted, we already have drafted, but uh, we are have our own team, and uh, we'll hear about next week wins results.
All right, that's Coach T right there. He's joined the Playmakers podcast. So there you have it. Um, for fantasy wise, we did, as Coach C said, we did drop our team. Our teams will be posted on the website. You'll be able to look at that and see what see what each of our teams look like. But with that being said, we get ready to close it out. And uh, Dallas, what we got coming up for tomorrow's show? All right, Darnell, me and you got some interesting stuff to talk about. The Mix Max Challenge is coming back. It's actually coming back pretty quick. If I remember correctly, didn't they do the first version earlier this year? I mean, it makes sense. If you listen to the closeout of the wrestling episode last week, WWE is clearly trying to get that money and raise that stock valuation. So the Mix Max Challenge, obviously, is one woman, one man in the tag team, and that's a tournament. Makes sense seeing that evolution is coming up. Maybe that's a promo for that. And we'll talk about the Shield getting arrested on Labor Day, seeing a judge the night of Labor Day, getting bail on Labor Day, then stealing a paddy wagon and coming back to the stadium on Labor Day. It, it, it was it was it was a fun week. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Until tomorrow, get ready. The NFL season is here. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. All right. Thank you for having me, guys. See y'all next week. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.